hope you're having a lovely week. This is actually going to be my first episode where I don't talk about anything wedding related. I thought as Matt and me are so close to completing on our first house, it's such a big deal that I would sort of share our process with you because it can be quite complicated if you haven't ever, like us first time buyers, if you're sort of thinking about doing it in the next couple of years, it, I'm hoping this video might be of some help to you. So back at the end of May, it was bank holiday weekend, um, a lovely couple were doing viewings all over the weekend on their property, so we went along on a Sunday, fell in love with the house completely, and Matt, Matt's a little bit better at putting a poker face on than I am. I gave it away, straight away. Um, so when we got in the car, I didn't know how he was going to react, but he loved it as well, so we couldn't put an offer in. This was the Sunday, and we couldn't put an offer in until the Tuesday, because being bank holiday. And she had mentioned that there was going to be a second viewing on the Monday, and I was just getting so scared, I was like, oh, they'll put an offer in before us, they'll get in there. And it was probably the most stressful two days I've ever had, just in my own head, Couldn't, you know, just kept worrying about it. So first things first, on Tuesday morning, we set an alarm, got up as soon as they opened, and we phoned up and we put our offer in. And by lunchtime, we were very lucky as it was accepted, and we were told we were the final part of the chain. Now the chain can be a really short or really long. I think ours was probably quite a standard chain, but it wasn't the shortest but we were the final piece to it, so everything was moving ahead. Um, first things first we had to do is get our mortgage secured. Now, this is something that I didn't learn until this year, but you actually can't ha do your mortgage until you have an offer accepted. I always assumed you would do your mortgage before, because obviously you'd need to have that amount secured before you could go buy a house, because obviously you need to know what you're getting, but you don't. So luckily we had done some research into roughly what we could borrow anyway. So when we found a house, we just got straight back on it and within a few days had a meeting with the bank. And also you have to have sometimes two or three meetings before your offer is secured and you know what you're actually getting. So it can take a few weeks, so just be aware that that's probably the first thing you should get straight on with. And it's really annoying, but even if you want to be organised, you can't do anything about your mortgage until you've had an offer accepted. So I say I wasn't aware of that, so if you weren't, just be aware. Um, so the mortgage was moving along nicely, everything else we booked in our valuation for the mortgage, so once you have your offer given to you, they have to go and value the house just to check that you're paying the right amount for it, so that they know that they're giving you, basically it's a good investment for them, uh, and obviously your, uh, what's it called, survey, that's the one. So yeah, we had our survey booked in literally for this coming week, and it was on a Saturday, and Matt got a phone call, and I, I just saw his heart go into his stomach, and I thought, we've lost the house, something's happened. Um, luckily we hadn't lost the house, but unfortunately the people that we were buying from had lost theirs. They had been gazumped, and if I've got this correct, gazumped means that someone's come in at last minute and offered a lot more money and basically taken it off them, which I think is so unfair and shouldn't be allowed, but yeah, it happened. But they said, just give them an extra two to four weeks to find a new house and everything will be back on track, which we did. And I feel so bad for them because they're such lovely people. They'd obviously have this house for a while, which is just makes you more paranoid then. Because I started thinking, oh, but what if they have to pull out? Because what if they can't find another house? Well, I, it was probably near the end of the four weeks where they did find somewhere, but they did. And luckily there was no chain on it. So we were told, right, everything's going again. Um, and what we were able to do in that time, though, is put our valuation and our survey on hold. Because you have to pay for those and you don't get that money back. So... If you have a valuation done, but then for whatever reason it falls through, that's a couple hundred pounds you paid, wasted, basically. So we put everything on hold, so luckily we hadn't paid for them. And then as soon as we knew that they had their offer accepted on another house, we had that rescheduled and done within those couple of weeks. So once we knew it was all going ahead again, we didn't mind obviously paying out for that. So it's sort of been going along okay now, because we're in what, it's mid-September, but it the thing that's sort of making me feel a little bit frustrated at the moment, if I'm honest, is it's just getting a completion date in order. So our solicitors had given us a date of actually today, but then we were told, no, they, uh, one person in the chain can't do that date, so we could we do a week today? And then we took a few days to hear if that was going to be confirmed, because we've just said yes, to, we've been able to do every date so far, so we should go, yes, we can do that, yes, we can do that. And then a few days later, we finally hear, okay, someone else can't do that date, so potentially, we could be getting our keys two weeks from today, but that hasn't been confirmed. So we are now at the stage where everything's gone through, 
and it's just getting that completion date so fingers crossed for us but apparently it's pretty normal to have this where no one can agree on a date well not no one can agree on a date but people just aren't available at the right times so it can take a couple of weeks in itself just to set out so it's very frustrating I'm not gonna lie I'm feeling a bit frustrated today because I just want to get a certain date because obviously where we're moving out of our parents homes we don't have a table we don't have a sofa we don't have well we've got our beds obviously but We've, we've ordered furniture that we thought we'd be in by now so we've had it delivered for like in a week's time and we've got to sort that out so that is stressful but just I think the key is to be organised so just keep phoning your solicitor every day just don't let that drop or every other day okay not every day if you if you feel a bit stressed and there's stuff going on then phone them every day but we've got we've sort of taken to phoning them every other day just getting an update seeing where we are if we can get anything else done because you kind of feel like you want to be moving um, but it I assure you that people like furniture companies are used to people buying furniture for new homes so they are aware of it you just have to give them enough notice so if you do go and buy new furniture find out from them how much notice they would need if you need to change the delivery date and the final thing I'll mention because I was really disappointed about this actually is the help to buy scheme I mean there's various different forms of it but in particular was the help to buy ISA I've been planning on doing this for ages it was mentioned well over a year ago I went to my bank they didn't know anything about it when it was coming in and then it eventually came in early this year so really excited to get this done because the idea is you pay 200 pounds a month in and once you've got up to 1200 pounds I think it is every 200 pounds you put in each month you would get 50 pounds from the government now the bank never said anything to us so we just did this as normal but it turns out we and we only found out last end of last week so you once you get to the final stages you have all this paperwork to fill in for your help to buy ISA you have to close the ISA then get a closing statement send that to your solicitor so they can send it to the government to get your however much it is that you've managed to save through them and it turns out that because we're buying just slightly over the budget that they set which they don't make that very clear you cannot get the free money you basically don't qualify so we did all this paperwork we thought we were saving for months and months managing to build up some extra money that we could use towards our fees because it's not cheap and then it just turns out oh sorry you can't use it and the solicitor was very understanding and very sweet about it but they said they've actually starting to have this quite a lot now where people give them all their help to buy paperwork and then it turns out that the flat or the house they're buying is just over a certain budget so they don't qualify and I think it's really wrong and I did have a bit of a twitter rant about it and I haven't heard from anyone but just be aware, if you do do the help to buy ISA, I think the maximum you're allowed outside of a London borough is 250,000. If you're inside a London borough, it's 450, which... Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know, be aware of that, because we had absolutely no idea. I hope this video was of some help to you, and don't forget you can tweet me at Charlotte's Vlog, and I'm on Facebook too, so that's facebook.com slash Charlotte's Vlog. Please let me know your stories, because maybe we, you know, you can help us give us some advice, tell us to relax, or me to relax mainly, and I'll see you next week.